Hello, I'm KJ Matthews, and I'm a proud new member of the HFPA, and I'd like to welcome you to the HFPA's annual International Women's Symposium. Now, since March is Women's History Month, the symposium is very fitting, right? Of course. Well, as the HFPA continues to transform itself, it continues to embrace talent from all parts of the world, particularly successful international female talent. And today, we have several of the most accomplished female filmmakers in the world joining us. And I can't wait to introduce all of them to you. But first, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm an award-winning broadcast journalist and I've been covering Hollywood for a little bit longer than a decade, but I've been in the business for about two decades. Um, if you've ever watched any of the entertainment stories uh, around the world on CNN, you've probably some, seen some of my work that is. Uh, I have helped spearhead some of the network's coverage when it comes to the Grammys, the Oscars, the Emmys, um, and a lot more end up coverage is particularly uh, coverage that deals with entertainment news. Now, currently, you can hear me and see me on various global media outlets around the world, including BBC, uh, Germany's DW English, Ireland's RTE, and the uh, UK's LBC Radio and Times Radio. So I get around. <laughs> um, today though, I am so happy uh, to spearhead a wonderful discussion between some of the top female filmmakers around the world. They'll be joining me uh, to discuss female filmmakers in the, in the industry. Um, we'll go into a deep dive about the industry and I hope that you guys will take away a lot from this discussion. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, my first panelist is director and producer, let me make sure I get the name right, Tiniola Olatini. Um, but I'm going to call her. Yes, I'm going to call her Tinny. How about that? <laughs> yes, that works. <laughs> right. Uh, now, Tinny is a great right, Tinny is a powerhouse, an up and coming uh, director from Nigeria who's accomplished a lot in the last few years. Uh, she gave an incredible theater adaptation of The Secret Lives of Baba Sigi's Wives, uh, which is an acclaimed book, obviously. Uh, followed it up with her debut like feature film, The New Normal. Uh, the film is about couples dealing with changes in their relationships as they age. The New Normal film won her a number of awards, including Best International Feature Film at the American Black Film Festival and Best Feature Film and Best Female African director the at the Toronto the International Nollywood Film Festival. Uh, Tindy is absolutely passionate about storytelling and amplifying the voice of the African woman. This is why she established Sour Mouse Stories Production Company. The production company is dedicated to telling our stories on stage, TV, and film with the highest production values. So let's welcome Tindy. <laughs> Hey. hey, thank you, thank you, KJ. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Now our next accomplished panelist is Katya Von Carnet. I believe I got that right. I tried to practice yes. it, but I hope I do. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Katya is a German filmmaker best known internationally for her critically acclaimed 2004 movie, Iron Jawed Angels. It's the first film that she directed in the U.S. The HBO film received numerous primetime Emmy nominations and three Golden Globe nominations, which resulted in a Golden Globe win for Angelica Houston for Best Supporting Actress in a Series, Miniseries, or Television Film. Iron Jaw Angels is a film about the American woman suffrage movement. Um, it's also, I can tell you, one of the best films uh, to really deal with that, that era uh, in our country. So I highly recommend it. <laughs> now, before Iron Jaw Angels, Katya had gained early recognition in her native Germany. Her 1993 film, Making Up, and 1997 film, Bandits, were enormous successes with critics and at the box office. Bandits was the winner of the grand prize at the 10th Yubari International Fantastic Film Festival held back in 1999. Now that same year, Katya was a member of the jury at the 49th Berlin International Film Festival. So let's welcome her as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. And finally, our last panelist is the groundbreaking director and screenwriting, make sure I get this right, Sol Berezo Pichon Riviere from Argentina. <laughs> I'll call you Sol. <laughs> Perfect. Great. Sol was born in Argentina and studied film directing at the University of Cinema and Film in Buenos Aires. 
in 2017, she won first prize in a competition for new filmmakers run by the Inca Argentine Film Institute. Her debut film, Mama, 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 tells a story of a little girl who drowns at her house and it's told through the eyes of a 12 year old who must face the death of her sister in a world without adults. Now the film was fabulously shot with an all female crew and presented at the Berlinale Generation and at the San Sebastian, San Sebastian that is, Film Festival. So I just wanna welcome all three uh, panelists. So happy that you can join us for our Women's Symposium. Thanks now, for having me. Yeah, I wanna throw this first question out to all of you, all three of you actually. Um, there was a study that was done and recently they said in 2020, 16% of the top 100 highest grossing films were directed by women. And another study, the USC Annenberg study showed that in 2020 had the greatest increase in female led films at 15%. Um, I'd love to get your reaction to that, all three of you guys. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like we have the same yeah. reaction. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> be honest, hmm. be honest now, be honest. <sighs> Still too little. Six. Yeah. It's not six. <laughs> Really? Really? I don't know. You know, statistics, they sound great. But what, what does that actually mean in real terms? Mm. I mean, why are we applauding 15% in 2020? We've been behind the camera. We've been in front of the camera. We've been doing things. So why, why are we still clapping for 15%? I mean, it's nice that there's more of us and it's nice that there's more, but it shouldn't even be a thing anymore. That's what we want. We should just be filmed and we should just be represented. We don't want to count it. We don't want to say, oh yeah, it's now gone from 15 to 17%. Woohoo. Wow. So it's suddenly I'm happy, but I'm, mm. you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. To me, all of a sudden, like, yeah, if we are, if we're going to be controversial, controversial, which I like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's be controversial. <laughs> Being a woman has been has been turned into a brand right now. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's super fashion to be a woman, and 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 all festivals wants to have the face of a woman. So mm -hmm. all of a sudden, it it also like kind of like you don't or you don't know if you're being like valued for your work or for your gender. So. It's, or even for your age, that happens yeah. to me as well. So yeah. that's quite kind of tricky, you know, because you kind of want to jump into that boat, right. but then right. you also, okay, um, do I want to Where be here mm -hmm. for my art or for my gender? But still, I think it's great that it's happening. I think changes mm. are always painful and uncomfortable. And that's where we are right now, but we are going yeah. to a more, I don't know, to, to uh, I, I, I believe we are in a transformation. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. I mean, I always think, you know, what can be done about something. I, I've, from, from, the, from the beginning on, you know, it's interesting. I've never thought much about that. I'm, I, I've, I've never thought about like so much, like consciously, oh, I'm here as a woman oh, okay. pitching a story or something. I just pitched a story. You know, I didn't really think about it much I just did it so right. I think it's very much about us women like empowering ourselves or sort of maybe inspiring to have the courage to just do it you know mm. I mean you know when I started out it was very much like in Europe mm. what I realized uh, like the very first like story you mentioned with making up right which is right. a story about like a female like a friendship you know and very like a satire about you know like, like a women behaving when it comes to men sort of thing and um and I realized wow in, in a European cinema the female characters are also heavy like they're so mm. you know so serious and they're kind of like victims and stuff and I thought wow I look around and all my my friends, you know, we have fun together. We love each other. We're very connected. We support each other. It's not very much. It's not like everyone's saying, "Oh, women are just very, very." We're in support, you know. And and I felt like, well, you know, what I'm experiencing around me has to be put in our culture. Has to be, you know, we have to create female characters that are like our Reflect experience us. and not mm -hmm. like recycled from like stereotypes from culture. Three you know, yeah. see the whole complexity, all the, the, the range of, of characters that 
that, that we can be. And I think that that's still that work we still need to do yeah. is let's, you know, create, you know, uh, uh, more female characters that are different. They're not the stereotypes. Like when I came, when I started in, in Hollywood, it was very much like I read a lot of, you know, uh, oh, it's either the very controlling right. um, business type woman or or she's, or is the housewife. It's very stereotypical or the grungy wearing black uh, rebellious teenager person and period. Yeah. You know, that's what's kind of, that was kind of the range. Right. You know, so there's more to be done in terms of the, you know the richer richer spectrum kaleidoscope of 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 of, of characters um, you know i was going to say that i don't mean to interrupt you but i was going to say that that brings up a good point there is more to be done but honestly what do you think is the biggest challenge to making sure that more is done when it comes to female filmmakers yes it is it is a big challenge because it's it's a whole it's a system like everything right. else, it's not just one thing, right? It's co it's a complex system. I think it's important to have more women in leadership positions, obviously making these decisions uh, about which movies are getting green lit, like the European system is a little different than the American system. Um, uh, but but it's a it's a very complex it's a very complex system which which you know which w w films get get green lit. I think. Mm -hmm. One thing we can do uh, that I thought about in you know anticipation of our evening is basically mm -hmm. the, I think we need to I think I believe nothing changes until we do right so right. I feel you know I think every person and this is belief obviously but let me just share a belief um, you know every person has male and female energies right so. Right when we manage to get them in balance in, in ourselves, right? And don't diminish like female energies, for example, like imagination or, you know, like being rather than doing, you know? So if we get male energy like in balance, then we participate in creating a balance, you know, in our field, in our world and around us. So that, that's, that's what I believe. <laughs> right. And I'm wondering, uh, Tinny and, and also Sol, what do you think are some of the biggest uh, challenges in, in helping female filmmakers move forward um, and, and not having to look at these numbers every year, having to look at whether or, number, uh, whether or not the percentage of female filmmakers have gone up or down? I, I mean, I, I'm going to agree with Katya that, first of all, we need more people making the decisions, more of us making the decisions. And each time you want to do something, can we just first approach it? This is a good script. Mm -hmm. This is a good film. Let's start from there. You know, and as Saul said before, I don't know if you are happy to see me because I'm female or because I actually have something to say that you're interested in. So just... You know, can we can the parameters be clear and the same for everybody? You know, can it just be it's a good film, it's a good script, do it this way. I need to distribute my film. If the entire panel is male and their idea of what a woman should be is mm -hmm. this character isn't doesn't reflect any woman. I mean, I watch a lot of you watch some things and you know that who are these people? They don't reflect anybody I know, they don't reflect my group of friends, they don't reflect my family, they don't. You know, who, who, who are these characters? You know, they don't reflect anybody I meet. But then again, if you have the men making the decisions, they're going to decide according to what looks good on them. I'll tell you something. If you're filming, um, what's it called? You're filming sort of a sex scene, for example. We know what we see. You know, we know what we see of the guys and we know what we see of the female. I mean, there are two people in this, you know, in this picture. And we see so much more of one person because that's okay. But hello, there are two naked people here. Right. We should see everybody's beats. If you don't like my, if you're going to show all of my beats, I should see all of yours as well. Right. And let everybody judge what works for them. So I think it's just decision makers definitely empowering ourselves. I'm just getting ready to pull another person into the room. So when you get a chance to be in the room, don't shut the door behind you. Don't just, you know, say, yes, now I'm in, bang, everybody else. No way. No, just keep that door open. Be ready to pull another person in. So there's more of us in there making decisions, then we can change it. And as you said, if we don't start to change from our own perspective, then we're on a long thing, <laughs> you know? Well so, yeah. said. Well said. <laughs> and so? 
I completely agree with you guys. Um, I would also like to add that I've been in this industry for very little, just like right. four or five years. So to me, there's also something going on in how are we the ones that we are already in the boat? How are we allowing new voices to emerge you know mm. and in a way as i in a way criticized before i also think it's good that now for example fundings festivals are having a women quota in their selection which you know it can be um, it has both things like good things and bad things mm -hmm. bad things what i said before but also i mean to me the most difficult thing is to enter And that's why we don't, I mean, in school, you can see in, uni in university, when I studied film, like even more than half of the, of the students were women, but what does it happen in between? Mm -hmm. I think there are like mm -hmm. a bunch of things happening. For example, motherhood, it's mother being a mother, <laughs> yeah. which is something that kind of like, it's like, a, like an alien gets you out of the world. <laughs> And then puts yep. you again, but then you don't no longer know how to readapt. Um, mm -hmm. So also, yeah, and that's why 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 we are lacking this point of view. Tenny is saying no that, uh, and 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 I don't think men should try to tell as women because we all need to tell by who we are. And uh, so, but perhaps that's why we we need more voices and more space for that obviously um but yeah i think we should be very generous with new voices and not, yes. not just women you know uh, i new think it, it's a chain i mean we it's we it's a support thing and sometimes with directors happen that everybody's playing their own game and there's no sharing and that's i think the most amazing thing in film like sharing because <laughs> you know what you do is nobody does it because it's right. just your voice and 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 so there's no competition there shouldn't be competition um, oh. but it, no go ahead yeah the sky is big enough for everybody mm -hmm. you know so yes we can have many new ones i mean when she said motherhood i said i i had to defer my dream of making films for nearly for 20 years so my kids could grow. And then I made a decision in 2018, it was now or just shut up. <laughs> Stop right. talking about it, do right. it or don't do it. But I mean, it's also, we're ready, we're strong. We're ready to face the challenges. We're not asking for extra special, but just give me the opportunity. Just open that door and give me the opportunity. And that's it. And you know, watch how we go. I mean, there's three of us here there, multiple awards, four of us here, multiple awards between us for different things. So, you know, it's it's just, we just want more. We just want more. You know what? Uh, speaking of more and, and opportunities, all three of you guys are obviously non-American. I'm wondering, do you think that there are more opportunities in your native country or opportunities here in America when it comes to filmmaking? Um, for my country, it's a very different dynamics. Mm. So, a lot of us are indie producers. So you, you literally do your thing. <laughs> so <laughs> you have to, yes, you, you, you basically have to self do your thing. You have a few gatekeepers who sort of own the cinemas. The distribution is the hardest part. And, um, but essentially you still have to get in the room with the distributors, but anyone can put together a film. Now, the resources to put this together, it's a different ball game. The, 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 the getting the crew, talking to people and actually having them listen to you is a different thing. So of course, with finance, you have to find your way. So most people, there are opportunities, but the problem is there's so many sort of counter opportunities, things mm. like there are no tax breaks, there, you know, the distributors are a select few who then yeah. judge what they want or what they don't want. And um, so, you know, Those are the real holdbacks. So while oh. you can, it looks like there's more space, but there actually isn't. <laughs> yeah. But we keep making that space. So essentially, it's just getting that balance between, you know what, I'm going to do it anyway. And um, for me, when I put my film at the ABFF Festival, it was just COVID had just hit us. Oh. And I just thought, 
okay, what do I do? I mean, I, I finished with this. I don't even know if it's a good film because <laughs> no one's had a chance to see it. Right. And then I just, I just literally entered it into the festival and it won. And that just told me, okay, yeah, you told a story. <laughs> so mm-hmm. yes, keep on, keep on going. So yes, encouragement, things like that, they're good. And it's okay to tell the next person you're doing well. You can do more, but you're doing good. You know, it's not, it doesn't take away your shine to tell another person you're doing great. And that's yeah. it. I think that's one of the things we need to get over. My opportunity doesn't necessarily close your opportunity. As a matter of fact, open for me means open for more of us. If I'm there, I can ask you, come on in. Look, it's 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 happening in here. And that's it. That's that's the chain continues. And um, it's what the boys club have done for years. Absolutely. So, you know, Absolutely. Yeah. We'll just Absolutely. do the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cut yeah. It's interesting. I was just reaching out because, uh, you know, when uh, when so was talking about motherhood, I just realized, oh, I have a picture here. This is when we were shooting uh, Iron Jaw oh, Angels. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yes. Wonderful. That so is had, great. My son was born that year. Oh, and, wow. You know, I used to think beforehand, oh, you know, mother and filmmaking. But you know what? It's interesting that that it actually, um, you know, I was still nursing during prep and stuff. I thought, oh, I can sleep next year, you know. <laughs> and there he was, you know, framing a shot, you know, there. And uh, um, so so it was quite the experience having just, you know, be- become a mother uh, to, to shoot my first American film. And so it was pretty exciting um, and, and possible. Um, I would say, you know, in terms of the question, um, uh, but it is it, it is a big issue, like motherhood and our and our and our job is is is, is a big issue because yeah. You know, like, anyway, a lot of the male yeah. filmmakers don't have to deal with that, obviously. No, <laughs> so, no, they don't. no, because you're prison of love, you know. When you have children, you're prison of love. But but uh, but <laughs> but anyway, it is it is possible, and it was it was amazing to have that combination uh, actually to birth these two projects together. You know these. Um, but in terms of the, you know, in my country and in versus versus America, it is very different. I mean, uh, it's it's in America. I think it takes longer to get a movie off the ground. It's kind oh, of yes. uh, it's it's almost accepted that it takes forever. And mm-hmm. and so um, I, you know, I lived in America, and then um, and then there was the writers' strike. So it was it was it was there was nothing going on. And so yeah. we just came here, we just came, you know, for just a few months, we thought, and then all these things happened immediately. And, and so, so, you know, so I stayed longer and then made uh, uh, various movies. And, and so it's much quicker here because we have a subsidy system. We have, mm. you know, and uh, if you've done something that got recognition and that was successful, then of course the chances of getting subsidy and uh, are, are are really good. And so I've been lucky to to then uh, make like a movie every two years, you know. And so, but something that was really my heart's desire, and you know, uh, uh, created this this um, brand about like the young woman and a horse. And so my two passions because of came together. And mm. so, but, but I feel also the longing for America again, you know, I also feel yeah. uh, I want to return and, and really now again, uh, be part of the international world. I miss it. You know, it's a different, it's a different horizon. It's, yeah. you know, of course he is much smaller, budgets are smaller, everything is smaller and the scripts, you know, the quality of the scripts in America are so better higher you know so so i really long to come back yeah and, no and I, everything I, i'm developing now is, is is english language it's very it's very different really why have you decided to do that's a very interesting choice that you made um why have you decided to do only english language i mean i know you obviously speak german yeah i founded my uh, own production company as well uh unicorn pictures um just co-produced a, a just did a, da- a dance movie um Fly, it's called Fly, um, and uh, just just uh, had a, a digital, digital release um, uh, uh, yesterday, um, mm. and I I don't know because I have this long a lot of the stories that I um, that I'm I've been creating are are sort of in the international world, you know. So why I don't know because I um, they're bigger, you know. They they um, why is it good? I, it's 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 interesting. I mean I. I you know, with Unicorn Pictures, I now um, uh, want to do a little bit like the European answer to like participant is basically oh, uh, okay. to create stories, you know, that like consciously, um, right. you know, inspire and give hope and, mm-hmm. and inspire social change also. And so, 
So I've been develop, so developing here and getting means to develop our, our uh, it's easier here. And then the ideal is to, to bridge both worlds, basically. Yeah. I, I want to turn the focus a little bit to the pandemic. Um, I know the pandemic affected everybody in our industry, film industry, uh, theater industry, uh, TV industry. And I'm just wondering, you know, um, as non-Americans, how did it affect your filmmaking? You know, because you have the kind of pre-COVID <laughs> filmmaking and the, and the perspective that you had as a, a female filmmaker. And then now that we're kind of at the tail end of the pandemic, I'm just wondering like how your perspective in terms of how you approach filmmaking has changed because of the pandemic. I mean, I can say something just that, that we were lucky to, we were lucky actually in the first year of the pandemic, I, I just, I just completed a shoot. I mean, that dance movie I was talking about, Fly, we had just com com uh, completed the shoot uh -huh. and I, I just started um, editing. So, oh, wow. so we were anyway, um, you know, there are all these, 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 these comic images like a edit, like an editor, right. and an editor in the pandemic, it's kind of the, the same, <laughs> the same, right. same picture. And so I was really lucky um, for that, that timing, you know, to have, and actually it created a, an advantage because it gave us more wow. time. It gave us, you know, they, they were more generous with time because it was so uh, specific and difficult to put this together, like all these dances yeah. and dances and, and 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 selecting the shots and you know, and so it it so so COVID gave us gave us more time and so I was able to really, um, really get the right balance in the editing and 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 have, have the time I, I needed. So I was kind of, uh, yeah, was was lucky for us. Well, lucky for you. Or, yeah. Titi, how did it, how did it I think you? For, yes, I just, I finished shooting in 20, in 2019. And so we're editing as well, getting ready, you know, trying to find the cinema release date and all of that when, boom, there goes, you know, COVID. And um, so it's sort of, hmm. I think in the long run, it yeah, it did affect the distribution and obviously right. people were not coming out. So even when we decided at the end of 2020 to go to the cinema, it was more a case of how long are we going to hold this down and how long is this going to go on for? So I probably, given it to do over, I probably wouldn't have um, gone the same way. But I think what it essentially the pandemic has now done is there's an urgency. You have something to say, you have something mm -hmm. to do, do it. Right. You know, because yeah. today we know we're moving today. You have a shoot, shoot it. You have a story to tell, get it together. That time where you procrastinate and you say, well, okay, you know, we'll do it later and we'll do it. I think we've suddenly also come down to what is essential, what mm -hmm. needs to be done. I mean, one of the, I'll tell you, for us, funerals are very important in Nigeria, for example. So when somebody dies, it's a big, especially older people, yeah. it's a big song and dance. And usually we say, you know, even when people leave abroad, if your father dies in Nigeria, you have to come for the burial. If you don't come, it's a big deal. And then mm. we started doing funerals by Zoom. <laughs> it oh was a God. learning because suddenly, yeah. even if you Ooh. wanted to be there, you couldn't be there. So couldn't. everything has changed. That just changed everything. And now you boil down to what is essential. You need 20 locations. Is it important? Does the 20 locations actually add to your story? Or is that just you trying to be moving? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it's, it's, yes. And you finally, you come down to what's important. Because each time you want to make a film, people say, oh, yeah, filmmaking is very expensive. And it is. But sometimes... Right. We do, we do certain things because that's how the other people do it. That's right. how that person does it. Without actually asking yourself, is this necessary for my picture? I think that one of the things they have definitely taught me is to look closer. What is achievable? What can you do? What is essential? What needs to be done now? Because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And we've never known, but somehow it's a little bit more urgent. <laughs> and, right. You know, suddenly we were locked down for two years, you know, so time definitely suddenly has a much more significant meaning. So for most of us, we're recovering and we've recovered well. And thankfully we didn't have it too badly. We didn't lose too many people mm -hmm. and um, we didn't have too many lockdowns, but obviously we just try to be careful and, um, that's it. It's, it's just a new season. So everything now is pre-COVID, post-COVID. Right. Hopefully it's gone dire for good. <laughs> yeah, there's a dire consequence, of course, in the uh, working in the, uh, only like in the theatrical sec uh, you know, section as a theatrical filmmaker uh, is that, you know, for instance, when we came out then in fall, 
uh, you know, people of course would stay away. P theaters are closing, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and I feel like I've done only uh, um, uh, feature films for like theatrical uh, releases. And so that changes the landscape not completely because when, you know, when we're traveling around making promotion for the movie, it was like theater owners, they, they changing their, they use the pandemic to, to, to have less seats. You know, exactly. and they, mm -hmm. they, they make them bigger and like more comfortable and sort of with a different design. And then you can charge mm -hmm. your, your cell phone next to the seat. So they, so it's more, it's less seats, it's more like serious. So everybody's going for a, more of an experience, you know, like that movie be an experience um, uh, because that it changed, that changes completely. Like, uh, like who's going to go out and actually pay for, with all the streaming that everybody's not getting used to, you know, yeah. And, Mm -hmm. you know, streaming during the pandemic like we were crushed like we, we, we were released uh um, same same time as as, as the, the new james bond oh my god we were crushed i mean yeah. there was, you know there was there was a you know because because people obviously i i didn't go to the movies for a long for a while you know because yeah, right. you know, everybody was scared uh you know inside room whatever so so less people would go to, to movies and, and the movies I would go to was sort of, okay, guaranteed events. Guaranteed, yeah. I know this movie, <laughs> yes. It was a tough time for new movies. Mm -hmm. For movies, yeah, it was, it was tough for, oh, the little, it, it's-, it's so, Independence, it's, yes, yeah, yes. It changes, the, it changes the, um, the, the landscape. I'm curious to see what's gonna happen because, you know, it's still beautiful, of course, to go go to the theaters and, and watch the movie with you know with other people and of course making the film I always like when you do the mixes and stuff thinking about oh of course yeah there's going to be in a big room and on mm -hmm. and surround and this that and the other but then you know how would that be for uh like a streamer you know this would be a different it would be, it would be a different way of making a film yeah yeah. Yeah. I'd love to ask, uh, bring Soul into this and just ask, you know, you have a unique perspective because your yeah. film um, were debuting really um, during the pandemic, uh, I think for the first time. So I'd, I'd love to talk to you about uh, being a new filmmaker and how that is attending um, a film festival or having your, your work kind of basically debut during this uh, pandemic. Yeah. And Sorry, guys, that I disappeared in, in the conversation. <laughs> And my internet went down and I re reappeared, but I really wanted to jump in in the conversation by telling mm -hmm. that my career somehow started with pandemic, you know, so I cannot, all I know is this, so I don't have a nostalgia for something that happened before. before. My first film, <laughs> uh, yeah. My, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my first film premiered on 2020 uh, in March, in February, in Berlin. Oh, so wow. then the, the pandemic mm. started and, and then I developed my second film while the pandemic and I shot in pandemic, wow. and et cetera, et cetera. And to me, I really want to link it to what Teniola was saying about, not only about cinema, but I think it has brought a change on how we see things, on how we approach things. and. I did find the COVID for being a, an artist freelancer very positive because in a way it gave me time and time mm. is the most precious thing you can have, no? And, mm -hmm. and time and, and solitude as well because it's the only moment you actually get to write and to make things. Right. But well, then right. the... the, the um, ah, you're losing me or you're... Uh, no, we can hear you. We can hear you. Go right ahead. You're fine. Great, great. So in a way, yeah. But then you have also the the like my movies, for example, haven't been uh, theatrically released right. until now. So I don't know what actually like because I only know the festival audience right now, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's yes, of course, like another part of of cinema which is what 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 we all want that is that it reaches people and reaches mm -hmm. hearts and reaches all types of minds uh, which is not really happening as perhaps it should it it would have happened if it was previous covid mm -hmm. but still i don't know I, i'm just taking like the new things this this brought to mm -hmm. our lives 
and also in a way on how movies travel faster than before. Yes, because right. before it was so much difficult to get to see a movie and, mm -hmm. and festivals online were not an option. And also traveling to a festival is very expensive. You need to be in the right. niche of like in, in a particular section, you know, it's not like it's for everybody. And I think this like kind of opened Open the, the, the audience center, no? No, no, it, it definitely has. You know, I, I want to ask you one other question. So your feature film uh, deals with a very tough subject, uh, that of death and loss through the eyes of a child. It's a very, very, very uh, tough uh, kind of an issue to deal with. And I was wondering why you chose to deal with that in your, your first uh, feature debut. What I wanted to portray most of all was the, uh, like, what I felt with my younger sisters, no? Right. And this energy and this atmosphere. And then kind of like the dramatic element came after that. Uh, what I wanted to portray was this feeling of, of women together and discovering things together and, and, and like sort of like putting the puzzle together, no? Right. And so I kind of wanted to, to tell the, the lust of innocence, the, the, like this veil going down uh, for this particular character. And it was an, a metaphor with the death as well. So mm -hmm. it went like this, um, but yeah, um, but it was, it was a challenge because I was very afraid of how to deal with the actresses because we had six, act six young actresses, uh, which we, I had to deliver the story in wow. a way those parents um, so it was quite a challenge but I was very surprised by by children and that's why my second movie I also use children and I and I think they 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 give something very pure to storytelling yeah 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 that's great a, a question for you Tinny um, I know with your debut your feature debut uh the new normal was, was great and you know something that you said in, a, in an interview I think it was about a year or so ago that really uh, stuck with me I want to repeat what you said you said uh if you're trying to please everybody you will please nobody so just do you the world will adjust that is brave when you're a filmmaker sometimes when you're a, a new filmmaker you want to put something out there that's going to please people so you can get your next deal or whatnot um but to take that approach especially when you you're having your um your debut your feature film debut yeah. is pretty bold and uh has a lot of confidence to it so i'd love for you to kind of expand on that. <laughs> well I, I think i think it's um how we say i mean in some circles it's considered quite a sin so i'm probably paying for it in some ways because um apparently i don't come across as humble enough because i feel that actually the world will adjust and right. so every time i'm thankful one because because of the pandemic i put it in at the abff uh. if the pandemic wasn't wasn't a factor I probably wouldn't have because I'd be thinking I can't get to the festival or, you know, but it was online and I could submit it. And that validated it for me. I can tell these stories and some people are going to like them. But the truth is you cannot please everybody. And if you're trying too hard to please everyone, you will please nobody, least of all yourself. Right. And um, I got asked um, recently another interview that what is my best career advice I've ever had and from whom I thought about it and I said actually the best career advice I've ever had is Teniola to thyself be true mm -hmm. do that always which is honorable and true and the advice was given by Teniola to Teniola so <laughs> it's my turn as is how I live and that's it because at the end of the day you know what's inside you. I mean, she's told, um, Saul's told a story through the eyes of children. She knew exactly what she wanted to say. But imagine someone who's going to sort of, who's a distributor telling you, well, you know, why do you want to do it through the children's eyes? You know, we don't think people will understand it. Um, you know, maybe you shouldn't. And then you find yourself, okay, but, you know, if they're telling me it's not going to work, if I do it differently, then how am I going to sell it? Take your mind off that. Sometimes, your recognition will come in the oddest of places, but at least you would know, 
I told my story, how I wanted to tell it in the way that I wanted to. And eventually you will be validated because some people are going to see it and think, wow, it's not, nothing is for everybody. As right. popular right. as James Bond is, some people don't like it. <laughs> some people don't watch it. So, right. you know, it is what it is. It's difficult. It's hard. And it's, 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 it feels like you're fighting a tide, but eventually as with all things, eventually if you do you, you can honestly hand on heart, hands up. I did it my way. And, yeah. Um, yeah. You will, you will be happy for it. I find so amazing what you just said. I just want yeah. to add that even if you try to do what, what is in the market, what is selling now, by the time you will be making your film, the market Something else already is already right. right. <laughs> <I've moved on. laughs> no yes. <laughs> yes. You're so right. And, You're yeah. So right. And it will just be one of many. And they will all just be the same. So why are we why are we looking forward to yours if it's just going to be the same as the other one? You know. Now I'm looking forward to seeing Saul's film because I'm thinking I actually want to see what that feels like. And you know, um, um, Katja has told me something. I'm thinking, okay, I actually want to try that. I actually want to see what that's like. I want to watch that. So if we're all doing the same thing and we all have the same voice, then what's the point? There's no excitement. But it's just easier to say, well, this sold yesterday, so just do it like that. But we have to keep on exploring. And that's why the world has to keep on opening up and exploring and tell different things. So that's why you can watch 50 movies and feel right. like you're watching different things. If we all did the same, we'll all just pause and, you know, zombies. And that's not what we are. So, yes, we'll just keep on, you know, defy the pink hair and do what we need to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Katya, I wanted to ask you because you had your critical acclaim uh, here. Your breakthrough was really in America with Iron Jawed Angels. And I'm wondering, did you have a lot of pressure on you to kind of conform after that to making certain type of films? Because usually you're not in the spotlight and then you kind of, kind of have that breakthrough project where everyone's looking at you, everyone wants to work with you, everyone's kind of determining what they think you should do next. And I was wondering next. if you felt that uh -huh. pressure uh, here in America once uh, your film was nominated, especially for Golden Globes and then won one Golden Globe. Hmm, thank you. Well, you know what is more, it was more difficult. Um, it was difficult after that. It wasn't kind of like I was um, covered in projects or something. No, it wasn't like that at all, interestingly enough. Um, I had more, but in terms of pressure, I had more pressure beforehand because it took, um, uh, it was kind of a rocky road un until then because, uh, mm. you know, my, my movie like Bandits brought me, was it, it, it showed in Toronto and that brought me to, to America. And, um, and then it was sort of, um, and both of these first films were sort of very much, um, like Tini was saying, very much like like my own stories or mm. you know uh here's what i wanted to tell and uh very like innocently so in a, in a, in it uh, and and there it was sort of oh, okay what about this script what about that script and it was very hard to to uh for me to feel like oh i can how can i make this feel like me how can i right. <laughs> you know i mean i mean right. my like the signature like how can i bring bring some, this something special to this how can i make this thing because it felt it felt a little formulaic, you know, the scripts uh, felt, felt a little formulaic and it took a long time. It, it took until a Iron John Angel to, to find something where I felt like, oh yeah, this is, this is, this is right. This is feel like this yeah. is, I can like, pour myself into it and, and, uh, uh, and it, and it actually, and I can, I can enrich it. I can, you know, I can, I can make it more something, you know, versus, and, you know, I think that is, that is a challenge coming from a different country to America, for instance, like a baseball movie or something. I go right. to the baseball movie, okay, yeah, I could right. choose baseball movie, but what can I really add to, you know, yes, you can always look from the outside. Maybe sometimes it's interesting to have right. a different, uh, an objective point of view uh, to something, you know, but then there's also the, oh, you need to know a lot about a subject matter. You really have to want to tell it, you know. Right. And I feel the strongest movies uh, and movies where there's a, um, a dedication or like a, a conviction behind it, you right. know, I, I feel, uh, um, you know, when you, when you sense that conviction or something that this filmmaker wants to say, and it might be not in, not, not ever in a dialogue line or it, it but it's between the lines. And mm -hmm. those are for me always the strongest, the strongest movies. So it needs that conviction. So I always look, seek for that conviction and it was a lot of oh the script or the, at least the ones that you know I got sent of course there's right. some that 
you know, a lot of beautiful movies that I didn't, <laughs> that weren't sent to me. So the, at least like judging by the ones that I got, you know, so. And of course wow. I made some mistakes in not maybe accepting this or that. And, and you know, my regrets about, oh, why didn't I do this? And why do not that? Why didn't yeah. I not do that baseball movie? You know, <laughs> I did right. have regrets like that, but but uh, it, it, that's that's sometimes difficult. That, that was difficult. The, wow. The, yeah. Well, I will say this. I can talk to all three of you ladies all day and all night. You are so interesting. You guys come with very, very, very different perspectives. And I just absolutely love that. And I hope our audience loves it as well. But we have come to our time to end. So I just want to say, I want to thank you, lovely ladies, for participating uh, in this, this women's symposium. And thank you for attending, um, everybody for watching uh, the HFPA's Women's Symposium. And we, we hope you enjoyed learning from these ladies and learning from their different perspective and knowing that there's not just one way to being a filmmaker. There's not, there are many, many different roads and everybody has to kind of follow their own path. So I hope that they have inspired you. I hope you've learned a lot from them and I hope you have enjoyed, uh, enjoyed that is this Women's Symposium. Thank you Thank for watching. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank, Thank you. you <laughs> bye bye, everyone. Thank bye you. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank bye. You. Thank you.